Hello family, welcome back. I hope you guys are doing great. I'm going to go over some very interesting things real quick that will answer a lot of questions for those of you who wonder what we're talking about when we say we never left Rome. And I never really fully comprehended how deep this goes. I knew that the symbols were there in our faces all the time and we've gone over some other really creepy and satanic connections that you see when you look at some of our biggest and most famous iconic statues and the ones on top of the buildings in DC, New York. They use the wisdom of the fallen and our inability to see things that are right in front of our face like we're just blind and they put these things out there and people love them. We all grew up loving the Statue of Liberty but it's like the veil had just yet to be lifted off of our eyes and so many things just slip right through the cracks but one thing that I just found out the other day and I've been wanting to share this but I've been extremely busy there is some connections to Rome and America that are mind-blowing that I had never heard of I don't know how I'd never heard of this to some of you truthers you've probably heard this years ago this is brand new to me and I'm guessing it may be to others but Rome and America do have some really strange connections. I'm just going to jump right into it and you'll see what I'm talking about because a lot of people look at the prophecies in Revelation and Daniel about seven mountains and all that. You know, I guess it says seven mountains, but it's also a word for hill. And the thing is, there's a lot of places like that with Washington, D.C. being one of them, being built on seven hills. These hills have names. But that's not where it gets interesting. Let's look at the original name of Washington, D.C. Back before it was known as Washington, D.C., this land on seven hills had a name. What was that name? Rome. No kidding. You can look this up. Rome, Maryland. And this is probably old news for some of you. I did not know this until the other day. I was just aware of the Rome connection because of the symbols that they have. I'd never really looked much further into it than that, but DC was known as Rome, Maryland. And the guy, listen to this, this is going to blow your mind, the guy who owned it, the guy who owned the land, the plot of land where the Capitol building was, his name was Francis Pope. And I was on a Catholic website looking up some information as I was digging through all this. And they said, yes, this guy's name was Francis Pope. And his nickname was Pope of Rome on the Tiber. Because there was a little creek that went through there that they had named the Tiber. And if you don't know, the Tiber River is in Rome. And we have a Pope <laughs> called Pope Francis in the year 2021. You cannot make this up. I thought this was something I could just fact check and be like, this is wrong. I'm going to fact check it. It's wrong. I like the Facebook fact checkers. But no, there is a guy or was a guy named Francis Pope on the property records and the place was called Rome. That's not where it ends. <laughs> it does. It just, it always gets deeper and deeper. There was a guy who owned the, the you know, the 10 square mile area that, DC is on the owner of that community was a man named Daniel Carroll he was the chairman of a three-man commission appointed by President George Washington to find a suitable location for the capital and he was also one of the names on the Declaration of Independence he was a Roman Catholic educated by Jesuits in Maryland and France this goes way deeper than you could imagine and it reveals so much about where we are right now in the world it seems like all of the predictive programming has pointed to this time and all of the things that they did in the foundation of America to have a Francis Pope and now we have Pope Francis and it was called Rome back then and my wife has always said that Rome you know to her is like the beast and you know that wound is healing and that's what it seems like to me. I'm not saying that's what it is. That's 
something you can decide for yourselves. But the connection we have here, and a lot of people claim that I am anti-Catholic and all of that, and they get angry. I am not anti-Catholic. Some of the best people I know are Catholic, but like all denominations and religions, the enemy's hands have been in there throughout it. That's why there are hundreds of churches around where I live, but not one of them is interconnected like a body. They are all divided. And that's sort of the way the enemy works is to divide the branches of believers, Muslims, Christians, Jews, Catholics. All of it's a divide unless you get to know the true Father and it starts connecting you. The truth about creation has connected me with so many different denominations and believers and Muslims and Christians. It's, it's amazing. Truth is powerful. It sets you free and it sets the blinders off so that you can start seeing who we really are and who our Father really is. And it lets you dig deeper into truth. And one thing about the Jesuit connection, these people were considered soldiers of God. That was sort of the guys they used. And I'm not saying none of them were, there might have been some, but some of those people were used to carry out the education of the heliocentric model across the world. And this logo you see here on the oldest church in Washington, D.C., happens to be called the Holy Trinity. And that goes even into the spirit of the Antichrist and it will upset a lot of people if I bring that up. But I really don't care. The truth is really important. I'm not here to have a big following, but to expose the works of the evil one. And this logo itself, of course, some of you will get a kick out of that. 32 rays. That was just me looking this up on the internet about that symbol. 32 rays as seen here. That number they like to flash everywhere. And um, I thought it looked a bit familiar. <laughs> so I, I was like, where, did I, where have I seen that before? And then I remembered that really old picture of Helios on that heliocentric model. Right there, exact same copy and paste sun rays on that logo. Just another little connection, kind of like Mr. Sun God Worshipper over here. <laughs> but uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's this picture here. It's older than when it was actually let out. This thing, had, the guy passed away before this picture became popular. But um, even if you guys don't know what I'm talking about with the Jesuits, here's one of them who created the Big Bang version that we go by today. This guy right here. His name is Georges Henry Lamotri or Lamont. I don't know how you say his name. I'm probably butchering it. But um, that guy right there next to Albert Fraud Einstein. <laughs> and he's created the Big Bang and he was supposed to be a soldier of God, and he totally erased the true creation story, and it has stuck. And uh, it's, it's why people get so angry when you expose that lie, because it has to do with the spirit of the Antichrist. I'm not gonna go into a full out lesson in this video about all of this. I will save that for another video. I just wanted to point out those Rome connections. My, my time is limited right now. But uh, the spirit of the Antichrist is very simple to understand. If you go to the Bible, it actually has four places where it's listed, and that's it. Antichrist, spirit of the Antichrist. And this is something that was going on back then. The word itself is in the Bible five times, but that's the plural form, so I was just counting the singular forms here. And it's in 1 John and 2 John, and that is it. And it's the most misunderstood topic, I believe, today. People always have this new so-and-so is the Antichrist or whatever. You know, back in the day, Barack Obama was the Antichrist. And that's not far from the truth. These people are of the spirit of the Antichrist. And I'll read these real quick just to refresh your memory if you haven't looked into this for a while. In uh, 1 John 2.18, it says, Little children, it is the last time, and as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Many Antichrists. These just mean they are anti-Hamashiach, or anti-anointed one. They are against the anointed one. And here in 22, just a couple verses down, it says, Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the anointed one, the Christ, he is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. The whole goal of the enemy's game 
is to eliminate the father and the son. The Big Bang model destroys the father. It has its own mode of coming into existence from that explosion. So if you get rid of the father, guess who else goes away? The son. You can't send your son if you don't exist. Eliminating the father is of the spirit of the Antichrist. That's their goal. And here it says, and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. It was at work then, and it's at work now. That's why this spiritual movement's going on, and when you get confronted by people, who are against you, especially when it comes to even to creation. You think, why are people so angry? Why do they want to kill me? Spirit of the Antichrist. We never knew we were under the influence of these spiritual powers that the Bible warned us about were at work, but we were, these powers of darkness. And it says here, for many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an Antichrist. Pretty much says the same thing here that it said here, but it's really going on and this word I saw I thought this was interesting when you look up the Strong's Concordance definition it says either one who puts himself in the place of or the enemy of the Messiah and I was looking up something else I keep everything on slides and I came across something it was an artifact that was given to Constantine and this is where that spirit of the Antichrist has done some major work and again, this is a subject that's gonna that would take a lot of time to really break down, but it's it's it'll it'll open your eyes to why there's such a big divide in Christianity, and it's one of the most controversial topics. But it says here, that here's that definition. I've just copied and pasted it. The title that was engraved. Let me look this real quick so I don't butcher it. It was a title that I came across. The title was called Vicarious Philae Dei, and it was Latin for vicar or representative of the Son of God. And it's a phrase that was first used in the forged medieval donation of Constantine to refer to Saint Peter, a leader of the early Christian church and regarded as the first pope by the Catholic Church. Now, that saying was carved in, and this was something, I think there was, somebody falsely said it was on the pope's hat, but it was actually this, this quote here, vicarious Christy, and what it means is a vicar of Christ, and when written between the years AD 88 and 107, it meant your bishop presides in the place of Christ, or the place of God. And what does the definition say up here? In the place of. In the place of. Just putting that out there, because there was something that happened back then, not long after the resurrection, I mean, within a hundred years, within less than a hundred years, they already had a plan in motion in a way to eliminate the Father and the Son, and they did so in a very crafty way, and history as we know it has really been hidden from us in terms of that game. You don't see it as a game to them, this evil playbook they have going on, but it's been going on, and it is now, and so I wanted to point these things out there's so much more to cover and uh, I plan on doing that I'll be done with my responsibilities with coaching here after next weekend February you know right around the whole pagan Valentine's Day that'll be my last weekend working as a coach and I'll have weekends off so and weeknights more open so that I can do live hangouts and videos again but uh Really looking forward to that. We're going to be having a meetup in Daytona, very informal. Just while I'm on spring break, we're going to go up there, and I'm going to post that soon so that anybody in that area can stop by and hang out. And uh, I was going to make it more of a formal thing and use one of the conference rooms, but things would have to change drastically between now and, and the end of March because they have everything shut down due to the pandemic. So uh, it would just be like maybe coming to my room or going to the beach or whatever, who knows wherever the spirit leads us will go but some of you may have also just noticed our channel name has changed a little bit a few letters and there's a reason behind that I will go into that too 
at another time when I have more time. No big deal. It's We're still the same as we always were. I'm not changing anything. It's for spiritual reasons. And you guys will understand, those of you who know what we stand for, know that we're not doing it because we're embarrassed of that name that we once had. There's always a reason. But uh, I love you guys. I, I'll be back very soon within the next couple weeks, maybe sooner, who knows. I'll try to make time to uh, do my next big teaching that will go deeper into the spirit of the Antichrist and what's really been going on and what we're up against. It's a big battle and you need to be prepared. You need to know what's going on behind the scenes and what has gone on because it will help you not only to not be deceived but to break it down for other people who are just completely lost in this. There's a hunger for truth and I thank you guys for seeking, sharing stuff. I'll leave links to where I found this stuff about Rome and its original name in the description because the person that found it, man, they just <laughs> put it out there and I can't remember how I came across it. I was looking for something else and I always end up finding something that's like a whole different topic that distracts me from what I was looking for in the first place. But uh, we'll be back soon. I love you guys. We'll see you around. Stay safe and stay ready.